Hello everyone, back shooting into today's fur video. So we're going to have a look at Enso for today's uh, fur video. We have got your uh, August Enso update. It's going to be the last Enso update of the year because from uh, next week we begin the winter updates and we will combine uh, the Enso information into the winter update. So we'd just be repeating ourselves if we did monthly Enso updates uh, through September, October and November. So Enso is primarily uh, a driver of the weather that's important through the winter because that's when it's at its peak, uh, really, both in terms of El Nino and La Nina. Now, of course, we're a long way from the uh, Pacific Ocean. So the impacts for us are not a continuous impact. So these events vary uh, from event to event. More impactful uh, for America. But uh, the impacts of being so most important for winter, and that's the reason why uh, we cover ENSO in very in-depth detail through the course of the winter updates. I say winter updates are beginning at Gaza once again uh, from Sunday the 2nd of September. So just a week on Sunday will be the first winter 2018. No, I don't say. Actually, it will be a little sneak peek for uh, the winter coming up this Sunday after we release the uh, autumn forecast. So you have to have a look at that. But the main part of the winter updates. Update number one will begin on Sunday, the 2nd of September. So this will be the final ENSO update of the year. Uh, I'll tweet for everything that's going on uh, in a moment. Now, of course, the story over the past few months has been, will we go into an El Nino, particularly in the last couple of months through this summer? The uh, modelling has been very, very uh, keen to take us into an El Nino event. But in terms of the sea surface temperature anomalies across the actual Pacific, there hasn't been all that much sign of it, uh, I have to say. So I'll bring that statement with the very latest. Will we have a more definitive sign of El Nino in this final update for 2018? You'll find out very shortly. Just to say that uh, earlier on today, we released JMA Friday. As always, on a Friday, we have our month ahead look ahead with the Japanese and CFS V2 models. And then we've also had a look at the weather for the next week's 10 days. You'll find both of those videos right now uh, on the homepage. So have a look at them and uh, see what you think. So let's start off by having a look at the uh, tri-monthly cold and warm episodes by season chart from uh, CPC, the Climate Prediction Centre, which is part of uh, NOAA. So this is depicting every uh, ENSO event, warm event, cold event, going right way back to uh, the year of 1950 on a tri-monthly basis. Uh, so that's um, December, January, February for 1950. You can see at that point we have got a blue negative number, minus 1.5. So that tells us that in uh, the first half of 1950, anyway, you see all of these other blue negative numbers. So through the first half of 1950, we actually had a cold event. We had a moderate La Nina event going on through the winter of 1949-1950, which faded out then through the spring of 1950 and then went to Enso neutral condition to borderline weak La Nina for the winter of 1950-1951. Uh, Right, so let's scroll down, and uh, the red numbers, of course, they are El Nino events. So, for example, here in 1958 uh, and in 1957, you can see that we have got uh, these red positive numbers. That tells us that through uh, much of 1957, we had a strengthening El Nino, and that El Nino continued into the early part, the first part of uh, 1958, before it went back to Enso neutral condition for time. But then another week El Nino actually took place at the end of 1958 and lasted into 1959. So blue is cold events La Nina, red is uh, warm events El Nino. Let's scroll down through the 1960s, through the 1970s, through the 1980s. Uh, we're down into the 1990s, into the 2000s, and we come to our current decade. There we are. We've got uh, 2010 just there, and we go all the way down to 2018, that year just there. And we can see that through 2017, just there, uh, into 2018, we did have a weak cold event. We had a weak La Nina. Uh, it's a very, very late starter indeed. Uh, so it only covers the final 
sort of free tri-monthly periods of 2017, but it did last into the first free tri-monthly periods of uh, 2018. So it began the year with a week uh, landing or a week cold event. Through this uh, spring and summer, it's gone back to Enso Nutra, and the latest number in the box that we have here for the tri-monthly period of May, June and July is actually ever so slightly positive. It's gone to plus 0.1. That is nowhere near uh, El Nino threshold, I have to say that. But it is our first um, sort of slightly positive number that we had since June, July, August tri-monthly period uh, last uh, year. Now, to get, uh, let's assume we are going into an El Nino. To get an El Nino designated, you have to meet strict criteria. So you've got to go with your anomaly to uh, zero plus 0 0.5. So that just there uh, in the trimonthly period of April, uh, May, June, 0 point, uh, 0 0.5, half a degree above average. That is a very important number because uh, you have to uh, get to 0 0.5 or above to reach a required temperature threshold to be able to say you are in a warm event, you have to are in, you are in an, an El Nino event. So you have to be half a degree above average. The other critical point is that you have to be half a degree or more above average over five trimonthly periods. So essentially, we've got to go for these remaining uh, numbers that we're going to get in these boxes that haven't yet appeared just here. We have got to get at least five of those. Uh, that are uh, at uh, half a degree or more above average. So very often you do get these events and they are never uh, never actually designated uh, to some degree. So we'll have to wait and see whether we do reach a required uh, temperature threshold over the required five tri-monthly periods to get an El Nino event designated. That is the way the modelling wants to go, but whether we do actually get to that point is, uh, is something that we'll have to wait and see. Right, so this is how the sea survey temperature anomalies were looking when we did July's ENSO update. This is uh, from NOAA. This is from the 26th of July, back when we did the last ENSO update. The ENSO region, by the way, is this area just here across the Equatorial Pacific from Peru over in South America, just there to Indonesian islands, or the islands of Indonesia, if you like, uh, over there, and all points in between uh, across the Pacific Ocean, that is the equatorial Pacific, and ENSO is the cyclical warming and cooling of the equatorial Pacific over uh, sort of yearly and uh, decadal time scales. So it's kind of like the Earth's thermostat at work, really. When you go into a landing, you turn the thermostat down, and you uh, via the Pacific Ocean, you kind of cool the Earth down a little bit when you go to the El Nino you're kind of like turning the thermostat up and you're warming the earth a little bit so you can almost um, see that uh, view Enso as kind of like the earth's uh, natural thermostat uh, at work turning the thermostat up to release heat let heat out across via the oceans across the world and then cooling things down turning the thermostat down uh, afterwards. That's how things were looking when we did last month's ENSO update. So I'd say very little sign of an El Nino uh, really. When we're in an El Nino we will see this area here uh, turning sort of orange and maybe if we've got a strong El Nino turning red. So you see these colours that we've got over here and also just there. That's more like the sort of colours you get when you're in an El Nino event. So not all that much sign of an El Nino event when we did last month's ENSO update. And the other area of interest is down uh, to the um, to the coast of Chile, uh, around here in South America. Got a lot of blue down there. Those are colder than average sea surface temperature anomalies. And when you have all that cold water off the coast of Chile, it is quite unusual to go into an El Nino event. You, um, I mean, anything can happen with the weather. It's always catching us out and surprising us. But to be honest, when you have those colder than average sea surface temperature anomalies off the coast of Chile, that is not something really that you tend to associate with an El Nino event. So I was a bit dubious. Uh, to say the least about this ENSO event, about this El Nino event, when I did last month's ENSO update. Let's have a look at the very latest, and here it is. 
And to be honest, there still remains not very much sign of an El Nino event. I've got to say that. So over here towards the coast of Peru, yes, it has warmed up a bit. There's a little bit of orange uh, appearing there. But those are relatively shallow waters uh, off the coast of Peru. So they could be getting influenced by weather conditions. Here in the central part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean, which is kind of like deeper water, there isn't really all that much sign, is there? I mean, we are a little bit above average. We're probably on the warmer side of Enso Neutral, but we are still at Enso Neutral. We certainly haven't gone into an El Nino yet as far as uh, the sea surface temperature anomalies are concerned in the Pacific Ocean. And we still have these colder than average sea surface temperature anomalies off the coast of Chile. So, again, it's very inconclusive. Possibly, yes, we might be going into an El Nino. But I mean, we've got these little blue areas just here, but it's actually slightly colder than average sea surface temperature noise, albeit they are in a small area. But uh, again, not something that you would associate with uh, an El Nino. We are very late on now. We're uh, sort of at the end of August. And uh, if we was going to get an El Nino, you would expect, I think you would expect, see those sea surface temperature anomalies looking, uh, looking warmer uh, than that. So again, I am quite dubious, to say the least, about the chance of us going into an El Nino event. That looks to me as though we're going to probably stay at Enso Neutral, but yes, we'll probably be on the warm side of, uh, of Enso Neutral. But there just isn't all that much sign there of an El Nino event. And with those cold and average sea surface temperature anomalies off the coast of Chile, again, quite dubious. And there's been no real change over the past month either through the extra Pacific Ocean. I suppose it's warmed up a little bit, but nothing nothing outside the realm of being in Enso neutral. So that all looks rather uh, rather dubious, I think, what's happening actually on the surface of the Equatorial Pacific Ocean. Now, these are the subsurface temperature anomalies. This is from the CPC, NCEP, and NOAA PDF. Uh, you can find the link to this on the links page. In fact, you can find it to all the websites featured in this Enso update uh, on the links page. So, this is updated on a weekly basis and they go over. Uh, various things. They are actually saying that there's a 60 to 70% chance that we're going to go into an El Nino uh, by the winter. So they're quite confident that we're going to go into El Nino conditions actually at CPC and uh, NOAA. As I say, these are the subsurface temperature anomalies. So you can kind of like think of this up here as being the surface of the uh, Pacific, of the Ecto Pacific Ocean. With Peru and South America over there and Indonesia uh, over there. So as we go down here, we see the depths that we're going down to into the uh, Pacific Ocean. So we go actually down to 300 metres, very, very long way down. Uh, indeed. So this is taking us back to, uh, to the end of June, 27th of June, uh, subsurface temperature. You can see we have all of this warmer, these warmer than average subsurface temperature anomalies underneath the surface of the uh, equatorial Pacific Ocean. So yes, you would look at that and think that if those uh, warm subsurface temperature anomalies break up to the surface of the uh, Pacific Ocean, extra Pacific Ocean, then we would likely go into an El Nino. That's the 27th of June. I won't show you all of the weekly breakdowns, but I'll just take you over to the very latest in terms of those subsurface temperature anomalies. And here they are. Uh, and if anything, you've kind of seen this warm area that was underneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean shrinking, which, again, is not something that you would associate with an El Nino event. So actually, we do have a little bit of colder than average subsurface temperature anomalies just there uh, over towards the Peruvians. So I wouldn't necessarily be overly concerned about that. But this orange and red area has uh, sort of sunk down to a deeper depth uh, so it's further down uh, into the depths of the uh, Ecuador Pacific Ocean uh, than it was in earlier uh, in the uh, in the uh, sort of late part of June. So if we were going to go into an El Nino event, you'd expect to be seeing the subsurface temperature anomalies expanding and moving up to the surface. And actually, the reverse is happening. They've shrunk and uh, kind of moved down to a lower depth. So again, both in terms of the sea surface and the subsurface temperature anomalies 
I am quite dubious about this El Nino uh, event, I've got to say. Now, one of the things that could take us into an El Nino event is if the Southern Oscillation Index went uh, extremely negative over a prolonged period. The Southern Oscillation Index itself wouldn't take us into an El Nino, but it would tell us that the atmosphere in the Southern Ocean is moving into an El Nino type setup. When the SOI is in its negative phase, it tells you that the pressures, the air pressures between Darwin in Northern Australia and Tahiti in the South Pacific, those um, air pressures are reflecting an El Nino setup with uh, uh, when the neg when the SOI goes very negative. When the SOI is positive, then the reverse is true. So when the SOI is positive, the air pressure distribution between Darwin and uh, Tahiti will be reflecting a La Nina type uh, setup. Now, if the SOI did definitively go negative, if the atmospheric setup did definitively go into an El Nino setup, then potentially that would help to allow those warmer than average subsurface temperature anomalies that we have at depth, increasingly at depth in the uh, extra Pacific Ocean, the atmosphere would allow those subsurface uh, warm subsurface temperature on this to move up to the surface and then you will go into uh, a now near event you'll find the atmosphere and the ocean coming into sync with one another uh, if you like so let's have a look at the latest soi numbers we'll start on the 1st of august it's from the bureau of meteorology in australia it's their equivalent of uk met office so this is how the soi was uh, looking on the 1st of august at minus 9.04. Uh, and actually, we did go into some quite negative uh, days uh, through the course of August. So the 6th of August saw us going down to minus 24.46. That's the kind of number you're looking for over a sustained basis to begin to get the El Nino uh, going. Let's move up here and you see more really quite extreme uh, negative numbers showing up. So we've got the 10th and the 11th of August, both coming out at uh, minus 31.08 in terms of the uh, 10th of August and minus 30.89. Very, very negative numbers. If we were to sustain that over a couple of months, then we would almost certainly uh, find the ocean going into sync with the atmosphere coupling up and you would get an El Nino developing. But as we come up to the latest numbers, we see that uh, actually we've lost some of that uh, negativity recently. So for the 15th and 14th of August, still negative, minus 11 and minus 19. But then we go through to the 17th of August and we go to plus 11. That's more reflective of an atmospheric setup. That would be uh, kind of like a landing year type setup. The 18th of August goes to plus 8.19. Then we have another very negative number on the 21st at minus 20.70. The very latest number is actually a little bit positive for the 23rd of August at uh, plus 3.94. So it looks like we're trading negative or very negative uh, and also positive numbers at the moment with the SOI. Uh, by the way, these are the pressure readings for Tahiti and for Darwin uh, as well just there. So it just tells you that the SOI is reflecting the pressure distribution in the uh, southern Pacific Ocean. It's not driving anything, it just is reflecting what that pressure setup is uh, doing, as all of the indexes that we use in weather forecasting are doing. It's the same with the QBO, the NAO, the AO. Uh, all of the indexes are just reflecting the atmospheric uh, setup. They are not, in their own terms, uh, driving anything. Anyway, back to the SOI. It looks like what's happening is that we are trading negative and positive numbers. And whilst that's going on, it's not allowing the Pacific Ocean itself to begin to upwell those warmer than average subsurface temperature anomalies. I'll just show you this graph up here. We haven't shown you this before, but I can show you how the SOI has performed over the past month. So this is the SOI value uh, on the side, and then we've got the uh, dates along the bottom of the chart. The key line here is uh, this red line. So that is your daily uh, average SOI number. You can see that back into July and the beginning of August just here, 
actually slightly on the positive side still with the SY. Obviously, through August, there has been a significant drop in the SOI. We've gone from where we was in the first week of August, just here, which was about at um, plus two with the uh, Southern Oscillation Index, to kind of like minus six, uh, around minus six just there. So obviously, a very sharp drop in the SY has taken place through the course of August. But it does look as though that drop in the SOI is levelling off to some degree. It has levelled off a little bit over the past few days. So from an SOI uh, perspective, we possibly do see signs that we are going into an El Nino. But you would want to see these negative numbers that we have had over August. And there have been some very negative numbers. I'm going to admit that. So kind of like minus 30, minus 31, very negative numbers. You would want to see that over uh, not just several days, uh, but several weeks, uh, like a couple of months, sustained um, and, and uh, regular to say that you are definitively moving into uh, an El Nino. So at the moment, it's just, just not enough, really, to go on to say that we are going into this El Nino event. And yet, the CFS V2 remains very committed to a moderate El Nino event. So this is the latest forecast from CFS V2 for region 3.5. I'll just explain uh, the regions to you. So uh, the central part of the um, actual Pacific Ocean, that is region 3.4. Then regions 1 and 2 are closer to the Peruvian side. So you can see that quite clearly the uh, CFS V2 is forecasting us to go into an El Nino. These are our dates along the bottom. We've got uh, July just there, October just there, and January 2019 just there, April 2019 is just there. The black dashed line is the ensemble mean, and the coloured lines are each individual member of the CFS ensemble plume. So, obviously, from the black dashed line, you can see that is moving up very sharply. This is around where we are just now, somewhere around in so neutral on the warm side. But by October, the uh, CFS V2 is placing us into this. Um, into this moderate El Nino event. It is actually going into moderate El Nino threshold around one and a half degree uh, degrees above average. It's not going for a super Nino. If it's going for a super El Nino, such as we had in 2015-16, uh, we would go up here. We would go up over two degrees above average. It's not going to that level, but it is going above a weak El Nino. It's going to moderate El Nino territory. Uh, and that's a very, very sharp increase from where we are now. It would be quite quite something really to lift the temperature up that quickly over like a couple of months to get to moderate El Nino thresholds by October and uh, November. So that's quite unusual. And something else we can say about the ensemble plume, the red lines here, the red coloured lines, they are the oldest ensemble plume members. The blue coloured lines are the most recent ensemble plume members. And you can see that there are actually a few of these ensemble plume members that are more recent, these blue ones, that are lower down, but are kind of like in just weak... Uh, sort of borderline neutral to very weak El Nino uh, territory. So possibly the CFS V2 is beginning to back away from its forecast of an El Nino. But you yeah, can only really go by the ensemble mean, which is the black dashed line. And that is still in moderate El Nino territories. What about the uh, what about region one and two? So that is actually again it is going into El Nino threshold, but it's slightly cooler than 3.4. So in the eastern part of the actual Pacific, it's a uh, it's a uh, weaker El Nino event that's being forecast compared to the central El Nino uh, region, which is telling us that uh, we are looking at a Midoki or a Midokai El Nino event which is a central-based El Nino event, uh, if we do indeed go into El Nino. ECMWF is looking like this. So I think the ECM is actually backing away from its forecast of an El Nino. This is where it is at the moment. Again, same idea. We've got the temperature anomalies along the side of the chart. The dates are along the bottom of the chart. Uh, so we've got kind of like where we're starting off at now, July to August, got September there, October, November, December, and then we're into 2019 
just there. So the ensemble plume from its warmest to its coldest members is from, uh, is from there down to there which is kind of like going from moderate to El Nino down to Enso Neutral. But the broad thrust of the ensemble plume, because these up here and these down here, they're outliers. They're, they're not particularly well supported by most of the uh, ensemble plume members. So the broad thrust of the ensemble plume is actually in that sort of territory just there, which is kind of like uh, sort of very weak El Nino to borderline in so neutral. So remember, our, um, our main temperature number that's most important for getting an El Nino designated is 0 0.5, half a degree above average. That's one degree above average. So you can see that very few of these ensemble blue members with the ECMWF are going above one degree above average. They're the ensemble blue members that are going... Uh, one degree or more above average. There aren't that many of them. So most of the ensemble plume members are in this sort of area just here. And that is kind of like Enso neutral to borderline underneath one degree, but above half a degree. So just very, very much on the on the knife edge of being Enso neutral on the warm side or a very weak El Nino. This is a back down from the ECMWF compared to what it was showing last month. I can show you last month. You can see that far more of these ensemble plume members were above one degree. That's one degree just there. Far more of these ensemble plume members were uh, were above one degree. The ones that were below one degree, were uh, most of them were above half a degree above average. So that's how it looked last month, the ECMWF on, on Ensemble Plume. This is how it looks this month. Clearly, there is a drop that's taking place from last month to this month in terms of its El Nino forecast. So it does look as though the ECM, the CFS isn't backing away from it yet, but it does look as though the ECMWF is backing away from certainly a moderate El Nino if an El Nino does take place place based on the uh, what the ECMWF is showing. If an El Nino takes place based on that, it will be a very, very weak El Nino indeed. This is regions one and two. Again, same story as with the uh, with the uh, region 3.4 uh, in that it's going for, it is still going just about into El Nino territory, but again, it looks weaker in terms of regions one and two compared to 3.4. So it looks like the ECMWF at the moment, it's on a knife edge between Enso Neutral and weak Madoki central-based El Nino uh, conditions. And finally, we've got the Jams Tech IOD model. This is what it's forecasting. So again, we've got the dates. Uh, we've got temperature numbers on the side. We've got dates along the bottom. That's July, where we're starting off at. This is October, and that's January 2019, just there. The red line is for your ensemble mean. You see that is creeping up through the course of the autumn. The ensemble mean forecast is lifting up. But again, only to weak El Nino territory. That's one degree just there there that's half a degree the all important 0 0.5 half degree above average just there and you see that most ensemble blue members are between one and a half a degree above average the red line which is the ensemble mean that is right on the border really between an El Nino and between Enso Neutral on the warm side. So again, this is a back down from the Jams Tech model compared to what it's showing last month. I'll show you July's forecast. So actually, even in July, it wasn't going as far as the other two models, but uh, it has backed down further from July. Let's go back to see what it's showing in May. So that's where it was in May. Again, not really going for this El Nino in May. Uh, that's where it was in June. A little bit more confident in June uh, for an El Nino. So it has backed away for, uh, now from where it was in June, most definitely. Last month was a back down from uh, from June. So from uh, June to July, we see the Jams Tech IOD backing uh, away. And then from July to August, we see it's backed away uh, a little bit further. And from June... Uh, through to August, you see there is quite a back down that's taking place there from the Jams Tech, although it was never all that set on it, certainly not as much as the CFS V2, certainly not as much as the ECMWF was, 
um, earlier in the summer. And of course, CFS is still set on this El Nino event. So it is all rather confusing as we uh, come to the final ENSO update. We was in a very similar position at this point last year. At this point last year, again, we had had a period through the summer where an El Nino looked likely. Actually, it collapsed and we finished up with a weak landing year. I don't think we're going to have that uh, this year. It's just not... The, uh, uh, the, it's just not the cold uh, subsurface temperature on is to support uh, another La Nina, albeit weak one, uh, for this end of year period. But whether we do actually get this El Nino, it does look very, very, uh, very, very unlikely, really, to me. Although the CFS is still going for it quite a lot. Uh, the ECM has backed away considerably over last month. Jams Tech was never particularly set on it, and that's backed away to there's not much happening in terms of the sea surface temperature anomalies. The subsurface temperature anomalies, where we did have very warm subsurface temperature anomalies just underneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean, they've shrunk and sank deeper down into the depths of the Pacific Ocean. So my guess is that uh, if we do have an El Nino event at the end of this year, it's going to be a very, very weak one. Shouldn't really have any impact on the UK's uh, winter, I wouldn't have thought, because it'll be too weak, really, to have any impacts on our side of the world. Uh, it's likely, if it does happen, it's likely to be Madoki, which is central base, that does favour a cold winter for America, uh, and what that would mean for us, of course, there could be knock-on effects to that. And we'll discuss all of that in the winter update. So we will continue to monitor what's happening in the ENSA region on a week-by-week -week basis and talk about it much more through the winter updates because uh, it's always important to see what uh, the ENSO state is. But at the moment, this idea of a, uh, of a moderate El Nino looks rather uh, in trouble to me. It looks like it's very unlikely to happen. But as I say, weather is always finding a way to surprise us, catch us out. So we will keep monitoring and uh, see if the CFS has this right. And we do indeed go into very rapidly, it will have to be very rapidly now, uh, go, go into uh, an El Nigo event. Right, so that is your final ENSO update for 2018. ENSO updates will return in January 2019, all being well. Uh, but between now and then, we've got the winter updates. So we will cover ENSO every week in the winter updates, bring you up to date on a week-by-week -week basis in terms of what's happening. So, uh, well, I'll see you in a week's time for those uh, winter updates that begin on the 2nd of September. But before then, a lot of updates still to come. So tomorrow we've got the uh, weekend forecast. We'll also have a look at weather for the next week uh, to 10 days as well. Tomorrow. But starting it all off will be the final seasonal model roundup for the autumn. And then on Sunday, we will have the autumn forecast. That'll be with you uh, on Sunday. The final gas weather is Sunday roundup will be on Sunday as well. Uh, and then there'll also be a little winter 2018-19 sneak peek uh, coming along on Sunday afternoon. Don't forget to check out JMA Friday and today's second video. They're both on the homepage. Have a look at those right now. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.